the content browser is your window or your panel into working with content inside of your editor. I'm gonna open up my content drawer from the bottom left and dock it into my layout. Now, right now we have one content browser. We could go up to window, content browser, and we could have up to four of them open at one time. I can open up content browser three, for example, drag it and dock it at the top, and I can set it to show me something else that I need to keep separate and available at all times. Now, going into our content browser, we can see on the left, we have a folder view. This is going to show us all the items that are inside of our project. We touched on the fact that we have our Your First Hour content folder here. This is where all of our content is going to go for the project. And then we have a Fortnite folder with Fortnite content and an Epic folder with Epic content. The Fortnite and Epic folders are protected. You cannot modify anything in there. You just use it for your own purposes. Now, earlier I showed you how we could go into the Create menu at the top, Light, and then drag an item into our world. And you'll notice it's trying to stick to the floor or any other items that we're trying to drag it on top of. In addition to our create menu at the top, which is useful for quickly accessing things like maybe we want to create a cube to play with or any other basic items, we have our Fortnite folder in our content browser. We have access to some Fortnite devices, props, and other items that come with Fortnite creative mode. For example, I can go into our props folder. I could go into maybe our cyber city. And now we have access to some of the props used in our Cyber City set. I could click, hold, and drag any of these items out and drop them into my world. Move them to where I want to let them be. Let go of the mouse, and I've now added them into the world. And I can navigate around our world using our navigation controls and look at the item we've just put in. You can do this with any of the items inside of our content browser. For Fortnite specifically, we also have some galleries available to us. If we go into our galleries folder and I go into say building, we have a bunch of smaller folders in here which contain the parts that make up our galleries. But if we scroll down, we can actually see larger items that are our entire gallery. And if we wanted to, we could drag a gallery in and get the entire gallery set. Or in the case of like our clock tower, we could find our clock tower, go into our clock tower gallery folder, and now we have the individual parts if we wanted to pull them in. Now at this point, I want to go ahead and get rid of some of the items that I don't need anymore. So I can select them in our viewport and use the delete key. Or we can right click, go to edit and choose delete. I'm going to clean up the rest of the items I don't need. In this case, I have multiple items and if I want to, I could delete them all one at a time. Or I could go into my outliner and I could select multiple items using the shift and the control keys. Or I can hold down the control and the alt key and make a box around the items I want to multi-select. Now in this case, I have the background selected, which I don't want to get rid of as well. So I can hold down control and unselect those. I just have the buildings and I can delete them. Now this item I want to keep, but it's way too big. And we've touched upon the controls we have at the top, which are selecting, translating, rotating, and scaling. So I can go to my scaling options. I can click in the middle where it's all yellow and I can drag with my mouse while I have the left mouse button down and I can scale and I'll be scaling at that 0.25 scaling option which we can see down here in the bottom right in our details panel. So that's how we could rescale items or maybe I want it to be skinnier. In this case, I want the scaling snapping off and maybe I'll just adjust the item so it looks something like this and now it meets the needs for what I want for my project. One thing you might find when you're working with items from Fortnite is they snap a certain way. Inside of our world settings, window, world settings, you have the editor cell snapping. If I was to have this enabled like it is by default and I drag in one of my floors, you'll notice no matter where I drop it, it snaps. It's going to try to snap and keep itself in the default cells. I can disable editor cell snapping and now it's going to respect my normal snapping that I've set up inside the editor itself. I'm going to delete these items since we don't actually want them and we'll look at our next thing which is going to be our fab marketplace. I want to go and set up a little wild west scene for playing around with. Let's see if we have anything in the marketplace. We can go back into our content folder, right click in the background and we can go to fab marketplace or we could go to the create menu fab marketplace or the window menu, Fab Marketplace. Keep in mind this is currently in alpha, so things will change over time, but this is where we all have access to both free and paid content. If I go back, I can find my Old West. I'm gonna explore the Old West section, and let's say I want something like a wagon. 
I'm going to search for a wagon. And I found a wooden wagon that meets my needs. I could now click, hold the mouse, drag, and drop the wagon into my world. It's going to grab it. It's going to create it and cook it for our project. And it's going to then show up inside of our project, which we can see here on the left once it's done. In addition, you can click on the item itself to open up its more information panel. You can add it from here, or we can click on the three dots. And if this is one of the assets that is free or we own, we can actually add these source files so that way we could then edit if we wanted to. We can see here, we now have that content downloaded from the Fab Marketplace, and we can see it's inside of our project. That stuff will be saved in our reference content folder. So if we wanted more, we can then drag and drop them out. So this is good for content that exists inside of the editor, both Fortnite content as well as Unreal Engine content and our Fab Marketplace content. But what if we now wanted to bring in items that we created? Well, let's look at importing that content. Let's go back into our main folder. I'm going to create a new folder by right-clicking and choosing new folder. We'll call this one Meshes. And this is where I'm going to import my items that I created. I created some hay bales. So let's make another folder called hay. And inside of here, we're going to import our hay. Now we have a few different ways of doing this. If we have a folder open in our file explorer, we can drag and drop those items directly into our folder. Now in this case, I have a few different sets of hay here, and then I have some textures that make up that hay. I'm gonna grab my first hay, drag it and drop it. It's going to ask me, what am I importing? We're gonna use the default settings. This is a normal stack mesh. We don't need to change anything special, and we'll go ahead and hit import. Once I brought my mesh in, we now have access to that stack mesh. I can double click on it in the content browser to open up my stack mesh editor. It doesn't look correct because we haven't actually assigned any materials or the textures or the way it looks, but we have our stack mesh. In addition, it also created two materials. These were the materials that were used when we created this item in an external program. Let's go ahead and bring in the rest of my hay bales. So I can right click and I can choose import. And inside my import folder now, I'll choose the rest of my hay bales by shift selecting them and hitting open. In this case, all of my hay bales, while they were different meshes, used all the same textures and materials. I'm going to tell it not to create the materials. We're just going to use the existing one. And we're going to import all. And we now have all of our different types of hay. Four bales and three items on the ground. I can actually drag these in and drop them because they are stack meshes. And we can see that we have what, what looks like a puddle and what looks like a big fuzzy gray mesh. Now that we have our meshes inside of here, we need the actual textures that we can use to set up our materials. So I'm going to use the add button at the top this time. Go up to import. You'll see it's the same exact setup. I'll select multiple items again, all of my textures, and hit open. And you'll notice it didn't give me a pop-up box, but on the bottom right, it actually told me it was importing and gave me more information. Now, one thing to note at this point, all of these items that I've brought in have a little asterisk or star icon in the bottom left. That means it's unsaved. It's a good idea to remember to save often just in case you have a problem. Let's go to save all. It's going to ask us to save our items. And now our items no longer have that indicator. They are unsaved. Now, materials will be covered in more detail in a later part of this course. So I'm going to off screen quickly set up our materials for these hay. And with that, I've now set up our materials, and I can take this hay and start stacking them by dragging and dropping them into my world. And with a little bit of effort, we can have a nice little setup. Now, one thing to do also is if I put some items into my world and I want to duplicate them easily, I can hold down the Alt key on my keyboard, and drag will then duplicate that item out. And now we have a nice haystack. Now there is another item I would like to bring in. It's inside of one of my other projects. Inside of Unreal Engine, I have this wheel prop that I want to pull into UEFN. I can select the item and find it inside of my content browser. And I'm going to go ahead and find this stack mesh water wheel. I can right click, asset actions, migrate. And it's going to ask me where I want to migrate this to. And the nice thing is when it migrates, it brings everything in as it was working inside of the editor, which means we don't have to worry about setting up our materials. It's going to come in working. Now, one thing to keep in mind is it needs to go inside of the content folder inside of your project. Inside of my project here, for my first hour, I have a plugins folder. Inside of the plugins folder, I have a project name folder, your first hour. Inside of here, I have a content folder. This is the folder you want to export into. We'll select it. It'll save it. It'll export it out, and now I don't need this project anymore. 
Going back inside of my UEFN Your First Hour project, we now have a new folder called Northwood. That was the folder structure set up for the project I just pulled my wheel out of. Inside of there, we have all the other items, including under a meshes, our water wheel. And just like any other static mesh, I can drag in my water wheel and put it into my world. And after a little bit of setup, it's going to go ahead and, well, it works. All my materials work. All my settings work. I have a water wheel brought in from Unreal Engine into UEFN. Now, one thing to keep in mind is these are just stack meshes. There's no real way to interact with them or do anything inside of Fortnite itself. If you want to actually do something with them, we need to turn them into building props or building stack meshes. We could do that inside of our content browser by right-clicking, choosing blueprint class, choosing if you want it to be a prop or a stack mesh. In this case, we could do a prop. Props are interactive and standalone. I could name this whatever I'd like using the F2 key to rename our asset. If I open up that building prop blueprint, we can find some basic settings inside of here. The important one being the stack mesh that we wanted. In this case, we can see it's the water wheel. We can also change all the different settings such as how you interact with it. And it's important to note once you are in creative mode inside of Fortnite, stack meshes can't be interacted with like other Fortnite props. You won't be able to use the device tool in order to pick them up and move them. That's why we need them to be props. Up until this point, we've been using the UE part of UEFN, but we haven't touched on the FN part. Let's go ahead and look at how we can play test this project inside of Fortnite itself. 